what happens? Do it. It says it's going live. We Welcome may be live right now. Are you, are you taking over the intro right now, Paul? Go ahead. You do we it. We are taking over the net. We are taking over the internet. Everybody's streaming because everybody <laughs> wants to know about Hive. It's true. Welcome to the show, everyone. You are, of course, watching Coin Watch. It is a weekly show that Paul Pue, CEO of Edge Wallet, and myself do, where we look at a different coin every week. And at the end, we decide whether or not the coin is worth us investing $100 of our own money in. Of course, this is not investment advice, just gives you a sneak peek into how we make our own decisions. We look at the team, the history, the roadmap for these coins. We dive deep into the tech. It's pretty fun. You learn a whole heap. Paul, welcome to the show. Glad to be back. Let's do it. Let's do it. So today we are talking about Hive. Hive is probably the most contentious fork of 2020 and uh, has a pretty- well, 2020 is not done yet though. We'll <laughs> it's see. not. And it's judging not by done. the other There's things some... that have gone on in 2020, I, you know, I have high hopes for fireworks to come, yep, I'm sure. There will be some more fireworks. Um, Sorry, no, go for it. Continue. On. No, no, please. Uh, and so while uh, we're diving deep into Hive, we're talking about this. Obviously, this is a fork of Steam. And we'll talk about a little bit about the history of all of that, why it was created, then dive into the tech and uh, let us know if you have any questions. I have a Cointree Absolutely. page. If you guys want to send questions, send that to cointree.link slash Naomi Brockwell. I'll answer that. Actually, I just got a coin tree. Uh, I, there's no message. And it's from Anonymous. Well, thank you, Anonymous, oh, thank you. for your message. Much appreciated. Uh, if anyone else wants to send that, that again is cointree.link slash Naomi Brockwell. So, Paul, you want to start us off. Just give us an overview of what Hive is, and then we can dig into the details yeah. there. So it's hard to understand Hive without understanding Steam. So I'm going to try to be as mm. brief about the fact that this was Steam, because really now it's Hive. At this point, right. what is what was the Steam blockchain for the most part? And I'd agree with a lot of the the advocates and users of the prior Steam blockchain. For the most part, it's kind of dead from what it was before. But Hive was founded by Dan Larimer from previous um, fame from BitShares at the time mm -hmm. that he had founded the blockchain, along with Ned Scott, who was CEO of the company Steam It. So there's the company and there's the blockchain. Steam is the blockchain, was the blockchain. Steam It was the company that helped develop it and built the first decentralized app on top of it, which was a blogging interface similar to Reddit. Um, that launched- And it was kind of remarkable. First. It was like the first it thing amazing, of, its, of its kind. I remember diving into it. I, I got an account just when it opened and then I just let it sit there for an, a year. And I was like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what it is. It. And then like a year later, everyone's talking about it. I'm like, that's right, I have this account. And I, and I started posting all my content there and I was like, oh my gosh. I'm monetizing money. my content. Like what? for real monetizing the content. For realsies. Yeah, it was pretty exciting. When I first thought about other uses of blockchain, I was one of those skeptical people that said, no, all the uses would be financial. In a way, Steam still is mm. a financial use case, but its core interface wasn't really financial. It was about content, content, content monetization, consuming content. And this is where I thought it was incredibly unique. And I think I'm not the only one that felt that way and still feels that way. So the blockchain launched in 2016 before the big 2017 bubble of, you know, uh, altcoins, tokens and whatnot. Um, ironically, April 1st, you know, people thought it was an April Fool's joke, actually. And Dan Larimer posted about the Steam blockchain using a different account that wasn't associated to him when he had talked about it on the Bitcoin talk forums and other crypto forums. So people thought, is this just a joke? You know, who's launching another blockchain? It's a social network kind of thing. But it actually was real and it was launched. And at the time of the launch, the company Steemit Inc. had, quote unquote, ninja mined approximately 80% of the supply or what would be kind of the expected kind of tailing supply. How that was done was definitely, you might have some more details of this, but it was hard for me to dig up the details of the definition of a ninja mine. In my understanding, right. there was an original mine, and then there was a reset due to a bug that, that was found, but the reset wasn't properly communicated. The fact we're going to restart the chain, it wasn't properly communicated to all of the participants, the miners. And a lot of people couldn't actually start mining on the new chain. And therefore, obviously the one company that could, the one entity that could was Steam it and acquired a lot of the, the coins at that point in time. It was about 80% the of the, the supply, which was, Correct. that's that's a lot of coins to be in. Yeah. Yep. Even, even in the hand. scope of like 2017 ICOs, most companies that ICO didn't try to keep 80% of the supply. But mm -hmm. this is almost a testament to how unique and powerful Steam was because it's even amidst that level of controversy, people loved it and people used it. And to this day, I'm meeting people that got into crypto because they got in through Steam. And now they yeah. don't even touch it. And 
they, you know, they talk about Ether and they talk about Bitcoin and all sorts of things and DeFi, yeah. but they've met the crypto community in the world through Steam. And so yeah. it was a, a really powerful onboarding tool to people that don't really care about crypto. They're just content creators. For sure. And actually, um, like, cause I don't want to spend too much time on Steam, but it's so important. You can't talk about Hive without talking about Steam because yeah, yeah, yeah. up until March, uh, Hive was Steam. Um, but just one more thing I'd mention is that, yeah, again, when I started getting into the Steam community, it was such a real community. Like I went to Steam Fest in Lisbon. Uh, I raised a, a bunch of money, collaborated with all of these artists for a feature film that is actually still in the works, guys, believe it or not. Nice. Um, and uh, it was just just like it's so fun to collaborate you have all these people bouncing back and forth like doing these iterations on different projects like it was really cool and um so now let's kind of move to hive and nice. let's say like all of the recent craziness that basically started february of this year and uh that's kind of the turning point of this but exactly. as you mentioned we had the issue with the 80 percent like things like that hadn't sat well with the community this didn't really oh, start in february people have been talking this about this for a while and Although, uh, you know, Steam it said, Steam it Inc. said, we're not going to use the 80%, which then dwindled, got down to about like 30%. We're not going to use that uh, to vote, like for staking. We're going to use that for development and, you know, develop exactly. the ecosystem. But people started to lose trust in that over the years, actually. Um, it wasn't exactly. just in February that that trust disappeared. But explain to us what happened in February that everyone was like, okay, this, we, we're done here. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about how to, how to explain this in order. This is a tough thing because yeah. well you know i'd like to explain the drama that it unfolded with um the event in february this year actually february 14th i believe it was actually on valentine's day this year where Happy valentine's tron day hi tron, exactly that the tron foundation acquired steam it inc and also the remainder of the tokens that steam it inc happened to hold not mm -hmm. quite 80 percent at the time it was closer to 20 30 percent right but in order to kind of understand it i actually want to jump into what exactly is the blockchain and how it works? And that will give a better understanding of when this transition happened, how some of the drama unfolded, how, yeah. how power, how the power was kind of switching between the different entities. And so I'd like to just talk about Hive and the blockchain itself and how it Let's works. do it. Let's talk about I, powering up. Life. Let's talk about powering the up, different right. tokens, all of that, because that's right. pivotal to what we're talking about. Exactly. We'll go into the drama afterwards, which would be a fun way to kind of end it. Yeah, yeah, I know you love the drama. So that's what you want to talk about right away. But so the blockchain itself, it was originally actually a proof of work mined blockchain and then transitioned you know a bit before the the the, the change of name into, into hive transitioned into proof of stake and this is a similar system to what dan larimer is building with eos delegated proof of stake where people stake tokens and they delegate their vote <clears throat> to uh, witnesses in in the term of hive they're called witnesses which are kind of like the validators of the network and like the miners of the network. And they're the ones that determine what are the rules, what soft fork and hard fork to go onto the network and get adopted. So they are kind of like the miners as far as their ability to determine the uh, consensus of the network. And so there's three main tokens in the Hive blockchain. One is Hive, which is the primary token of the blockchain. Hive Power, which is effectively Hive that has been staked and effectively locked in the system and committed for a duration of time. Meaning that once you have Hive in powered up mode, Hive power, it actually takes quite a lot of time for it to power down. It currently takes 13 weeks before you can turn your Hive power back into Hive and it just slowly every week turns some of that Hive power back into Hive. And then there's HBD, the Hive blockchain dollar, which is a stable coin um, that's pegged to the dollar. Although as you'll hear, it hasn't been very successful in keeping that peg, but it was meant to appeal to, once again, the non-crypto people, just the content creators, as you can imagine, if you're not into having volatile currencies and you want to earn money in from your content, you can do that in a currency that's now, well, that's relatively stable, at least more so than Hive is. Um, the way the currencies are issued, now this is kind of the interesting thing. People think of consensus and mining and they think that's the way currencies should be issued or, or proof of stake where you stake a certain amount of coins, you get a certain amount of coins. I like to think of the innovation behind Hive as almost like a, a subjective kind of mining versus an objective mining. Objective being, hey, you found the right uh, the right um, random number which solves a block, and therefore you're rewarded with some coins. Or you staked some money and you chose only the right transactions to include in a block. Uh, in a block, you're going to be rewarded with some coins. It's either true or false, right? You either got it right or you got it wrong. 
with the sub concept of subjective mining, you get to vote by having staked hive power. So you have hive that you turn into hive power, you stake it. You can now vote on content, whether it's good content or what you consider your bad content. And the aggregate total of votes with hive power backing those votes determines whether or not that content rises up the charts and says this is relatively good and also determines how much the author of that content receives as a reward. So with, with the blockchain, there's amount of reward of inflation that's created every you know, few blocks. And part of that reward goes to the witnesses, but part of that reward goes to the content creators as well as the people that are uploading the content. So it has a lot of this game theory behind it where if you create good content, then people are going to upvote that content. And if those people that upvote the content have a lot of, of high power staked, then you're gonna get money on the next block. And they, as voters, upvoters to that content or downvoters of the content, if they upvote some content, and a lot of the community follows along with that trend, meaning you're not upvoting bad content, but you're upvoting good content, then that will also reap rewards to the person that uses their hive power to upload content. So it's got a lot of this game and uh, gamification, a lot of dials yeah. to tweak, which is probably the biggest challenge, but it does make for an amazing network of people monetarily incentivized to really rise con good content to the top and also to create great content. And that's mm -hmm. a unique thing that it introduced. And you know what that also does is like, I always like to compare the communities of the different coins because different incentives are so important. And what Steam, as you said, uh, I mean, sorry, Hive, as you said, uh, incentivizes is people say like being a good community because you get downvoted, you lose your mm -hmm. reputation, you don't earn money and all this. So it encourages people to reach out only if they kind of have nice things to say about someone. Like that doesn't always happen. You know, of course there are trolls on there. Of course there are bots, all kinds of things. But by far, I found it the most pleasant community to be a part of, um, which is very interesting. Yeah. And it, probably one of the reasons why the people are saving their comments for something relatively positive is almost everything can be voted on. As well, it actually costs you to interact with the blockchain. It appears to be free, but it's not, uh, it's not totally free. The way the blockchain works is you have to stake some amount of high power. And with that, you get you get this thing called a, uh, the term was right in the tip of my tongue. It's a resource credit. Sorry for the delay there. So it's a resource credit. And the resource credit, recharge, it, it gets used and depleted as you do anything on the blockchain. So as soon as you upvote, it costs you a resource credit. As soon as you post some content, it, it uh, costs resource credit. When you comment on a, a blog post, that costs resource credit. And the more high power you have staked, the more resource credit you have, and then also the, the max you can have when it recharges. So you, it depletes and then it recharges, it depletes and then it recharges. Now, if you're posting just a bunch of spam and you're just, and you're uploading random bad content, then you're burning through your resource credit. So right. while it feels free, it's not totally free. So it is somewhat of a, a spam prevention mechanism. And also you wanna use your resource credit in ways that could earn you money back, such as uploading good content versus bad content and posting good content versus posting bad content. So yeah, this monetary incentive is at least in, in intent well aligned with what people really want to see on a content creation network. Mm -hmm. And as I mentioned, I post all my content on Hive. I make money on my content. It was like the first, I remember that like the first video I put up was a music video I did. And I think I earned like 50 bucks on it. And I was like, what oh, I, that, that, it's a very That's strange cool. feeling to earn money from my free content that I put out. Um, and it's this interesting incentive structure where other platforms you might have to pay out of your pocket, like out of your wallet. There's sort of this mm -hmm. fixed sum thing. As you said, this power that you have to vote, it replenishes and it isn't the same like mentality that goes through people's head. Like I have savings. Do I give someone my savings to help them? Yeah. It's like, it's a different system. And so I found that people are a lot more generous with people. You know, there are a lot of people who like my content, but may not have the resources to send a donation, for example. And things like Steam enable people to support others so that they can actually monetize their stuff, have you know sustainable um, career and content creation, and it's, uh, it's not out of their pocket. So it's very interesting. But all right, Paul, now let's dive into, because we've kind of covered how this voting mechanism works and everything. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to kind of explain what the issue was and how this all started in, uh, in February? 
Got it. So uh, you had mentioned briefly that this started even before February, and there was always this divide between Steam and Inc., which held a lot of the tokens, and the community, which is obviously using these high power tokens and was posting content. And one of the turning point moments in the, the split between the community and Steam and Inc. was when there was a proposal for a hard fork, and a, a witness on the network had verbally um, opposed this hard fork. Can't remember if it was a poser or, or was promoting it, but it was in opposition to Steam and Inc. Right? It was something that was in, a, was in disagreement with what Steam and Inc. Uh, wanted. And suddenly, his ability to become, become a witness got downvoted. So the people that are witnesses are voted on by the people that have steam power, right? As you mentioned, it's a, it's a delegated proof of stake. And they were instantly downvoted specifically by Ned Scott and some of the tokens on uh, Steam at Inc. So that the greater entity of Ned Scott, the CEO of Steam at Inc. and the token that they had, had basically almost instantly after uh, one of the uh, witnesses had disapproved of uh, Steam at Inc.'s kind of hard fork stance, was he removed? Was he was instantly removed as a witness? And this caused a huge ripple effect within the community, where they said, "Gosh, all these tokens carry a huge amount of power, even though they were promised not to use them." Mm -hmm. And that was a turning point where there was actually a proposal within the witnesses, the ones that weren't part of Steam and Inc., to freeze the tokens of Steam and Inc. and say, "We're going to make those no longer votable." The initiative didn't end up passing, but it set a precedent where. There's now the controllers of the token versus the actual community and network and a, a notable divide. Come now February 2020, you know, Valentine's Day, and we hear the announcement that Steam and Inc., the company, and the 20, 30% of the remaining tokens of the network that they had was purchased by Tron or Tron Foundation, Justin Sun. And, you know, to understand where the community was coming at that point in time, they were actually thinking, you know, this could actually be a a good turning point. One of the issues they had with Steam it was they weren't really spending the funds in a way that they thought was constructive, such as putting effort into marketing the existence of the blockchain and building new tools, um, getting the word out for, to get more content creators using the platform. And if there's anything that Justin Sun can do is he can market. He's right. you know, a genius marketer. So well, great, <laughs> yeah. maybe we'll actually have more marketing opportunity around this blockchain. You know, right, they right. said this is a hopeful change in the network, but what ended up happening was very, very far different. Instead, it was an acquisition. And then soon after, which we can go into detail, uh, an almost 100% control of the original Steemit network, hence the yeah. reason they afford it. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's important to talk about the nuance there because I'm not sure. I mean, at the very start, there were some interesting things going on there. Like you mentioned that people were losing trust earlier than this. Then mm -hmm. he purchases the network. Um, and then there was kind of this silent agreement behind closed doors. The witnesses mm -hmm. got together and said, okay, we're going to do a soft fork to freeze Justin's funds so he can't use it. So it was kind of right. this preemptive strike that said, we're not letting you access this money to vote. Um, mm -hmm. And so I think that that escalated things unnecessarily. But then Justin in return turns around right. and goes to the exchanges behind their backs. And it's unclear what he told the exchanges. Like I actually did an interview um, uh, with uh, Notestein, Dan Notestein, who was mm -hmm. like the second person when it was just Dan Larimer and him at BitShares. He was like one of the early devs. He's kind of been there from the start. And I, if you guys want to watch that, that's uh, on my members channel. Uh, so you can check that out. I'll, I'll add a link. But he kind of delved into that history a little bit. And he said, listen, we don't know what, he's, what Justin Sun said to the exchanges, but the exchanges all claim that he said it was um, just a regular upgrade that they mm -hmm. just had to kind of stake these funds. Exactly. It's just a regular upgrade. And so they did and everyone's funds are locked up. And he said, listen, as soon as I get back control of these witnesses, um, you know, I'll, I'll add a change in. So these funds aren't locked up. So the exchange was like, okay, I mean, we don't want the funds to be locked up because you, once you power up, it takes a long time to power down. We don't want them locked up. Obviously people will be pretty pissed at that. And so then, um, there was this giant revolt once the the soft fork was um, 
uh, rescinded on, then the community mm-hmm. was just like, oh, no. What there was this giant do? battle between like uh, over the 12 witnesses, people going back and forth, people staking huge amounts of money in order to power up. You saw the price of steam like skyrocketed. <laughs> and eventually it was like, listen, we're not going to win this battle over the witnesses. He has a lot we're of resources. Fork. You know, we're going to hard fork. And I think that, I mean, for the community, it seems like the right decision if this is a platform Absolutely. that's based on internet censorship and based on freedom of expression, like you don't want to have to trust someone. That's the point of blockchain. You don't want to have to put your trust in a central company. You want to be able to trust the blockchain and trust the system. And um, and so Hive was born and it's great. And um, it's uh, like there, there are some, some differences with Steam. Like when it forked, they did make some changes. Do you want to kind of delve into some of the different things? You know, admittedly, I dove into so much of its its mm-hmm. history and how the platform was working. Yeah. Probably one of my shortcomings was kind of some of the stuff that, that had uh, changed and also its future roadmap. I know they had changed. One of the more uh, notable differences was actually less of a change that Hive had made, but one that Steam had made, which was mm-hmm. to change the power downtime. Uh, which is normally initially two years when Steam had first launched. It took a really long time to power down your your Steam power down to Steam. Right. That was then changed to 13 weeks. And because in, in our understanding, Justin someone wanted to be able to exit on his investment, basically sell off the thing that he just bought. He changed the power down to, I believe, a few days, uh, probably like a week or so from 13 mm-hmm. weeks to about a week. Uh, oh, no, I take it back. I think about a month. So from 13 weeks to about a month, so 13 to four weeks, so that people could power down. Because unless until you power down, the Hive or Steam power can't be moved. Yeah. Right. So if you want to be able to sell it, you have to power it down first. That takes time, and then you can move it. So that was one of the more notable changes between the two. But you know, the other ones, please feel free to go into the details. Yeah. Well, I would just talk about like the main one is that when Hive launched, they ported over everyone's coin, so it's like one for one. But most notably, oh, yeah. they did not they port did not. over the <laughs> exactly. initial stake of like the 30% uh, because right. they realized that was just a, you know, a giant tool. It was like this attack vector that has mm-hmm. been used against them. So they didn't port that over, but they also didn't port over any of the Steam witnesses um, uh, accounts who voted in support of Justin Sun's, Sun's witnesses. Um, right, so right. anyone who voted in support of that, they weren't ported over anyway. It caused a little bit of an uproar, um, but it was just kind of a firm stance that they took. You know, we are decentralized. We don't want to support this. So if you support it, you're not for our team. Um, and and I was yeah, gonna say, the fact that they didn't they didn't bring over the witnesses, that's actually not even a thing that you do. You didn't. You don't even have to change code to do that when they forked over, you just keep the same code. So that now, now that the new fork, the Hive chain, doesn't have all the coins that are owned by Tron, Justin Sun, those coins don't have the ability to vote witnesses in. And so the coins that actually do carry over can vote on whatever witnesses they want. Once again, this is nothing to do with the um, actual blockchain consensus changes. It's just the fact that there's a different pool of people with coins with Hive power that can vote any witness they want in. And they obviously are just going to vote the ones that they believe have the best interest of the new network in their mind. For sure. And another different interesting change is that with Steam, I mean, I always use Steam and Steam it interchangeably because no, Steam not. was primarily Steam it. It was this platform that was behind it. They had this huge stake. Yeah. They were the biggest platform. Um, and it's what m- most notably everyone went to on the Steam blockchain. Of course, it was possible to build other iterations. There were other different platforms, mm-hmm. nowhere near the size of Steam Inc. No one, you know, right. um, no the one. almost too similar. You, they, people thought exactly. they were the same. And what's interesting now with Hive is that you don't have that central powerhouse and it's a lot more distributed in terms of different Mm -hmm. people, you know, building different iterations on top of it. That's super interesting to me because we've heard that promise in blockchain a lot, like places like Library, which I love, talk about how there's no barriers to entry and anyone could build their own client, but we haven't seen that. You know, we haven't seen that on a lot of platforms that claim that anyone could build their own client based on this blockchain. And uh, Hive kind of is proving that model that you can have a blockchain and have multiple different like interfaces built on top of it. And yeah. uh, and I think that's I think that's pretty cool. No, that's that's uh, key important for sure. It made it a l- admittedly a little confusing for someone like me that just said, okay, well, you know, I had an account on Steam. It I went there. There are my keys now where do i go on the hive ecosystem to then use my my keys and also use my coins so as as 
a really important little note for those of you that did have money on Steam, especially Steam dollars, which are still roughly at a, at a dollar and any Steam, which is I think less than 15 cents right now, you can take those keys and use them on Hive and extract the HBD, which are the Hive blockchain dollars, and as well as the Hive tokens um, or power up and you know have Hive power they can use to upload content. But you're absolutely right. Now what they're doing is they've actually changed the interface as opposed to going to Steam at Inc., which um, fully integrates the keys and interface. You take your keys, put them into a Hive wallet, not unlike the way kind of MetaMask or um, Wallet Connect works on Ethereum. You use that wallet and have that wallet interface with various different dApps in, this, in the Hive ecosystem. So they've made it, they've kind of separated the two, um, some ways for better and some ways for worse, depending on where you come from in the UX point of view, but it does open up usage across multiple uh, different applications versus everyone just kind of driving straight to Steam it. Mm -hmm. One other change that I will mention is that they changed the vesting period for newly staked Hive tokens. So generally when you stake Hive tokens before you would be able to vote immediately and this caused a huge contention, uh, caused a huge, huge issue with Justin Sun. So they changed it to now require a 30 day vesting period. So if people you know power right. up real quick, if they go and stake their tokens, then they can't actually use them to Start vote voting. immediately. Exactly. Um, so that was an interesting change to try to mitigate this, this scenario, this which is kind again. of cool. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly. Which, and that is, that's effectively what, you know, to go into detail about what happened with this Justin Sun tricking the exchanges, you realize if you're an exchange, you know, put yourself in the shoes of Binance and CZ, uh, you're supporting hundreds of coins. Yeah. Many of them might be forking. They, you know, hard fork, soft fork, software upgrade, network upgrade. And from your point of view, Decentralization is actually kind of hard. Who do I talk to and who do I believe when the so-and-so network says yeah. uh, we're going to have an upgrade, a quote-unquote upgrade? You really just want to be able to go to one person and tell, okay, well, just tell me what software to install on our network and we'll just run it. Right. And in all the years prior to February 14, 2020, it was simply Steam it in, right? Yeah. It's like Binance just go, Steam it, okay, great. We'll install it. Sounds good. And the same thing happened afterwards. They just went through the same communication channels. Email gets sent from what looks just like Steam and Inc. like before. Hey, here's an upgrade. And in a way, like you said, there was a bit of the spark of controversy in the sense of that soft fork temporarily froze uh, funds of, um, of the Tron Foundation, like the Steam funds from the Tron Foundation. And that was a way to kind of excite the exchange and say, oh, there is this, you know, uh, it's a regular upgrade, but also there is this threat uh, looming where people could be freezing the funds of your users. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's obviously a big thing. Exchanges don't want users to lose access to their funds. So here's an upgrade it's going to prevent that from happening in some way, shape or form. And that was entirely not what was in the code. So it's almost they verbalized one thing and exchanges can't audit every single line of code and all of these upgrades. They just said, okay, fine. They install it ran it and then realized what what just happened what ended right. up happening was they basically that that software effectively powered up a bunch of new witnesses without the permission of the actual network so a bunch of new witnesses got powered up and the old ones got got removed from the network effectively giving the tron, the, uh, tron foundation full control of the entire network and there's actually a uh, i got a chance to, to talk to luke stokes who is very, very close with the Steam community through its entire foundation. He was, he was a witness on the network as well. He's big with the Hive community. And he actually had a long one-on-one -on -one thread with Binance, and, uh, with Binance CEO um, CZ explaining to him, here's what was going on, here's what happened. And CZ explaining how he didn't even know what, he had, what they had just done. They're like, um, we were just upgrading for what we were told. We didn't realize that this happened. We didn't realize that this happened. Um, okay, sorry. No, we didn't realize that. Sorry, we're, this is you know this is just one of the hundreds of blockchains. Whoops! I think people realize that you know the there was definitely some some misleading going on, but it's also not difficult to do so because exchanges supporting hundreds of coins can't track all of them very closely. And then number two, if you're actually interested in the network, hold your keys. <laughs> this couldn't have happened if people actually held their own coins. It's right. because exchanges were holding the keys for you know millions of dollars worth of steam that they even had the ability to power up those coins and vote on the network.
Yeah, absolutely. It's um, like, do we explain that nuance about the exchanges, how they used their mm -hmm. power? Yeah, I just want to make that fund. clear because this exactly. is not their funds to use. Fund. But as soon as you give your money to the exchanges, that's exactly what they can do. So yeah, they can do yeah. that. They can get the funds for any forked coins. Like there's no promise that if a chain yeah. forks that you get both the original and the new coin, no, such as Hive. I don't know which exchanges did actually give people the equivalent Hive Mm -hmm. coins after the fork and definitely they're voting with your coins not you yeah no it's uh it's like this it's a fiery story i kind of want to i want to do like a a reading like a dramatic reading of this saga <laughs> yeah. because for me it kind of epitomizes what blockchain is about it is was really thrilling when it happened and i have to admit it took me a mm -hmm. while to get onto hive because again as you said like there's all this information out there it's hard to know what's happening is it a bunch of people who are like we're doing a fork because we want to double our money and to. it's like you know you see so much of that in the crypto space but as soon as i sort of dove into it and understood what was going on i was like oh wow this is actually proved what blockchain is about this is like a community well, rallying around and uh saying no the power is distributed with us we're going to do what we need to do in order to protect it so that one person can't hijack it it's like this wonderful interplay like of game theory and tech that makes blockchain tech so fascinating yep, exactly so the community proved that they can take control even if they are what's considered the fork and they are the the new kind of altcoin relative to the original has a completely different name different currency code exchanges had to then effort put effort into supporting, yet it is still done quite well. You know, and that is what is, for the most part, from anyone I know that has ever used Steam, that is their definition of the blockchain. That is the continuation of the Steam blockchain. And what's currently Steam now is what they consider to be, in a way, the fork, right? That's the thing that forked off and became the centralized alternative. So um, even with yeah. the naming and marketing effort, or not effort, but the challenge that Hive had, it's been relatively successful. Yeah, and there was this interesting thing, I'll, we'll just mention it, and again, uh, Dan went into this in detail in the interview that I did, um, that basically you had two business magnets who were discussing <laughs> this uh, this exchange, right? When they sold, when you had um, uh, Ned Scott selling Steam Inc., Steam It Inc., uh, to Justin Sun, it's sort of like the idea was to kind of just basically dissolve it and then Absorbing transfer it all Tron. over to Tron. And as Dan said, when he spoke to him, he's like, if you had, if they had spoken to any tech person, they could have explained this can't you happen. Can't it's not a graphene based, you know, system. You can't like, it, it won't work. It won't um, work exactly. You know, uh, there are some things that the graphene based blockchains enable you to do, which is, you know, have multiple different types of coins on the same blockchain at the base layer. And Tron just wouldn't enable this, right? And so they said that because it was such a secretive deal, no one even discussed it with developers on either side. And no right. one explained, like Tron wouldn't have known because they didn't work in depth with Steam at the time. And uh, and Ned didn't discuss it with the devs. So they didn't explain that it couldn't be done. So there was just kind of this miscommunication with two business people saying, this is what we're going to do. Excellent idea. Yes, yeah. I, I agree entirely and they just didn't bother to talk to people who actually built the thing to explain you know what this meant so that's kind of interesting and again in return you saw this community and the devs are all kind of going off as well like it's it's very fascinating uh what's happened um all right so is anything else that you want to go over before we go to the final uh conclusions um you know i think one recurring theme in my discussions with with luke which is very obvious along the lines of what you said is i don't think justin sun knows what he bought like i don't think he knew what he was buying in, in the whole yeah. process to him it's you know tron is another is just a fork of another coin it's a coin you can send and receive it's got some smart contract stuff there's another yeah, yeah. blockchain there's a coin you can send and receive it's got some smart contract stuff you can put tokens on it oh there's this other blockchain you can send and receive and and you can put some tokens on it and whatnot but he didn't realize the underlying technology and how it was so unique and different from other blockchains the yeah. fact that it had this subjective mining content creation piece of it and in his mind, he was just simply going to absorb it into the Tron blockchain as if you could, but it, the Tron blockchain doesn't have that functionality. It doesn't have those features. You don't, it's just not another token you throw on there. And that realization came later when he actually tried to do that. There was an announcement that, oh, you can now go and take your, your coins and you effectively burn them and turn them into Steam coins on the Tron blockchain. And if you're like, well, why would I do that? Can I still post 
Can I not yeah. post anymore? Would I be able to power up? Would I be able to vote on things? So in his mind, it was just another coin. And he didn't realize that both the community around it, ecosystem yeah. around it, the apps and its use case, he completely didn't understand the use case. Yeah. And, and I think that came definitely much later and, and the reason why the community had such a divide and everything split. Yeah, and I will mention, so the Satoshi Roundtable was just before that. And Justin Sun uh, came to the Satoshi Roundtable. Ra- you heard a little yeah. bit of there. Yeah, uh, he, he came to the the uh, the Satoshi Roundtable, and uh, and Ned Scott was there Scott as well. There. And I remember um, it was it, someone mentioned at the time they mentioned Ethereum to Justin. Sun. They were like, you know, why why don't you just like buy Ethereum and you've got a lot of money, <laughs> just do that and kind of merge them. I won't mention who said that, but it was kind of interesting that this happened. And then like a week later, this deal between mm-hmm. Ned Scott and Justin Sun went down. And I wonder if the round table was sort of the meeting ground. for You know, the that. power behind in-person communication and rubbing elbows and having, you know, what is it? Unlimited. I won't, I won't share what goes down at the Satoshi round table, but there's definitely some <laughs> libations that are flowing throughout the evenings. So a lot of karaoke uh, guys, actually, I have a good video of Justin Sun oh, and myself right. doing karaoke a week before all of this drama went down. It was Naomi's kind of like, fault. Oh. It was all <laughs> Naomi's fault. That's where it all comes down to. All right. Now we've we'll come to the, that's right. I opened his mind to singing mm-hmm. Taylor Swift and uh, potential uh, <laughs> selling. No, I had nothing to do with this guys. Um, so now we're down to the final part where we decide about investment is this something that you want to invest a hundred dollars in so i'm going to hand it over to you paul i always make you go first because I always, I, so, okay i'm going to go first today but the next week i'm going to make sure you start it off you'll forget um, you'll forget um, uh yeah no this one's an easy one yes uh I've, I've always liked the project of steam the all of the negative parts about it the stuff that i was very skeptical on outside of the tech and the dot and you know the game theory knobs you have to dial outside of that the part that did make me uh, a skeptic was going to steam it ink. Um, that's what everyone kind of complained about with that gone. And with Tron and the Tron foundation, not being an issue, I think, you know, the Tron blockchain has its own pros and cons, you know, for however much people love it and hate it, but at least to separate it from this project and let it run on its own. And it seemed like it's flourished. Uh, I definitely would. And that's even with the hive that I already have being ported over from steam. So that's kind of adding on to my, my small bags that I have in, in Hive already, $100 for sure. Yep, so that's a yes from you. That's, that's a yes from me. That's a yes from you. Um, so I will say a few things. Um, so I already get Hive from my posts. Um, mm. I think that the whale issue kind of still is something that needs to be tweaked in the system. It's not perfect. People who, you know, I had a friend of mine complaining on Twitter earlier that like he doesn't want to get involved with the community because he puts posts out and it doesn't get traction. And it's very difficult unless you can get the attention of a whale or, you know, donors to actually get noticed there. I think that's something that they have to figure out, to be honest. I think that uh, it's something that other platforms have tried, like minds.com is trying to figure out the whale problem, things like that. Um, But but I definitely like the further decentralization of this. I think that it's really exciting. And what's most exciting is it's it. there's no leader at all right now. Like mm-hmm. when I was like, who, I want to talk to a hive deaf guy. So what do I talk to? And Dan Notstein was obviously um, uh, an obvious choice, um, but he's one of many people working on this. He's not a leader in it. And there are all these different teams and different platforms and, I really like that. So I'm a, yeah. I'm a yes as well. So let's oh, see cool. what happens. This, this yep. decentralized experiment. So there yeah, we go. It actually as motivated said, me to start putting more content on there as well. So um, I think the, the future is bright for this one. Um, I, uh, I do feel like it, it has what I call the faucet sink discrepancy problem where there's many ways to earn the coin, like obviously mining, staking, mm-hmm. creating content. Probably the piece that the ecosystem needs is uh, a sink, which is where to use the coin. So it's got the faucet, but the sink problem, which, you know, where exactly is that? Are you paying for ads? You're not necessarily doing that, but it really starts yeah. to have to compete with payment coins where, hey, it's a currency. I mined it in a different way than Bitcoin, but I'll want to be using it in a similar way as a transactional medium, you know, wallet to wallet transfers, paying for goods and services. And at least they have a captive community of people that, hey, I've already got this. Maybe I'll start accepting uh, payments with it um, and starting to use it as an actual currency. That's probably the piece that's been missing. 
but um, I think it has a better chance in its current state as Hive than in Steam for that part to flourish, where it actually becomes a currency of use. No, I can I completely agree and concur. Again, every time that I want to actually use the money that I make on the platform, I have to take it out of the system. Obviously, right. that puts down with pressure on the price. And, you know, it's like the more people who just want to kind of get out of the system, which you have to if you want to actually use this to make money, which is what content creators want to do. Um, mm -hmm. So I think they have to figure that out. They have to build out an ecosystem where you can use it in system. I get um, some sort of a, I mean, obviously they have one mechanism of that in, in that if you stake it, you um, power, yeah, power can up. yeah you power up you can upvote other people's content you can upvote your own content so there is that element of it of course i think mm -hmm. it needs to be built out a little more i'd be interested to see what the um what the different uh communities do but yeah. that is everything guys if you wanted to check out my interview with dan notestein it's an nbtv members only video currently um and that will soon be released as a podcast as well so check that out on my podcast channel or become a member of nbtv and support myself um and uh anything else oh crypto beat newsletter sent it out this morning if you guys haven't signed up to that it's just a weekly newsletter that gives you all the crypto news from the week in five minutes or less um so that's at namibrockwell.com slash crypto beat and uh paul as always so wonderful to chat with you and you share that's your great. expertise and i thank you for everything that you do on the channel but also thank you for edge wallet and all the awesome stuff you do uh there so uh everyone go and have a wonderful rest of your day enjoy yourselves thank you weekend. for tuning in and oh wait 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 you know what i got a super chat and i totally was so immersed in hive i didn't read it patrick oh no Henry said hive is by far best social network it's fantastic i there i mean it's great i i could cut patrick that it's just really a great network so um if you don't think it's, the, it's one of the best social networks um watched a great piece of content last weekend uh the social dilemma if you guys haven't checked it out definitely do it'll, mm. it'll make you really really value a lot of the stuff that Naomi talks about specific around uh using tools that protect your privacy so Ooh, go check that out i'm, I'm excited surprised. about watching this Oh, definitely. Yep. And yeah, it yeah. also let you appreciate platforms like Hive, where mm -hmm. the community has a, de there's a decentralized community that controls the content and what rises to the top versus uh, billions of dollars of machinery and AI and machine learning that controls what you see based on profit. That I think is an important difference between this social network and what we're used to seeing from a lot of the big five. So interesting. Maybe I'll watch it now. I'll do a review or something. Yeah, actually, I would love to hear that review. But it's uh, yeah, right. and I actually know a couple of people, and you might know a few people in that. In yeah, that probably. Yeah. Um, Paul, before we go, what's your Hive username? At Pollinator. Just like At my Pollinator, name. the same one he always does. Well, thank Twitter. you so much for joining me, everyone. Go have a great rest of your day, and uh, signing off. Bye. Right. Take care.